Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we're gonna take a look at my portable CD player collection. I didn't intend on amassing a large collection of CD players. In fact, there's one more that's not shown here. It is a super cheap Walmart one from about 10 years ago. What ends up happening is usually one gets packed away or lost and I get another one. A couple of them we reviewed on this show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna talk about sort of the pros and cons to each unit and tell you what I think about it and give you my overall thoughts. As you know, I love CDs and CD players. I'm not gonna go into all of that again. I think it's a superior format. Okay, so we're gonna start with, no, we're gonna start with that one. We're gonna start with this. This was my first portable CD player. This is the Sony D131. We've talked about this a lot. It's as basic as you can get in terms of functionality. It doesn't have any anti-skip dust magnet. Anything would like that. Although I like the matte the fact that it's not shiny. It's like a matte black. So it seems to stay cleaner that way, but I love, you know, the logos and stuff. Mega Bass was like Sony's branded bass boost system. One bit DAC, that's the, the DAC, the digital to analog conversion. AVLS, it's an automatic volume limiter selector thing, and that actually doesn't work in this one. This unit isn't the exact unit I had when it came out. I bought this, or I bought my first D131, um, Shoot, it was like 94, 95. It was a big deal. It was a big deal too, I remember that. But I bought this one on eBay a couple years ago. I lost my original somewhere along the line. And uh, like 10 or 11 bucks, and I'm so glad I did. Um, so yeah, the AVLS doesn't work. It's like a volume limiter. Um, in terms of functionality here, you've got, it's programmable. It's got everything you need. The display's on the front. You do need to kind of tilt it up to see that display, especially if you're you know laying it flat like that. I've noticed that you really do need to kind of tilt it up, but I kind of gotten used to that. Going around the side here, uh, just the design, I love this kind of squared but rounded design. And it's got these weird clip things here. I've never figured out what these are for, and I've always wondered if it's like a bracket to hold it in something. It's got a 4.5 volt power supply. It does have the batteries. Uh, this is a problem, not a huge problem, but this is supposed to be attached and just hinge. But runs on two batteries two double A's. It's got, okay, it's got two rubberized feet up front and then just two plastic nubs in the back. Let's see if I can get a date on this one. Um, yeah, I don't see a date right off the bat, but uh, yeah, about 94, 95. This is sort of Sony's like budget model, but it worked great for me. I love it. I love the compact disc logo right there. I don't know why that kind of stuff. I just love it. Great unit. Push button operation for the lid just pops up a little bit and then you lift it up. Still snaps in a good place, still sounds good. Um, and something I wanna talk about with these CD players is there's not a huge variance from one CD player to another. I think unlike tape players and some other formats, maybe record players, there's not a whole lot of difference in sound quality from one to the other. Once you get into CD, you get a sort of baseline level. Now there are variances in technical quality, but uh, what, are you gonna notice it? Probably not. This unit, uh, oh yeah, by the way, so we got a line output, which is a big deal to me because with the line output, you have uh, the ability to plug this into a sound system or speakers and have that volume perfectly set for that line output volume. You can do it with a headphone jack, but you have to put this up to about 75, 80%, and there's a little bit of fiddling needed in order to get that line level signal from a headphone jack. So it's nice to have that. We talked about the power jack, there's nothing else on it, hold switch, that's pretty much it, you guys. AVLS and the bass booster down here. I love it when headphone jacks are green. I don't know, I think that's cool. But yeah, there it is, the D131. Oh yeah, sound quality wise, there is a little bit of hiss, and I don't know if that's just inherent in this model or this particular device. Um, so eventually, I moved into this device here, and this was also a replacement. I bought a Kenwood. It had the most amazing sound quality. I noticed, I'm contradicting myself, but at the time, I felt like it sounded better than I had remembered the Sony sounding because I had sent, I had lost that and then I had, you know, bought one of these and had lost that and then bought this again probably, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So I lose CD players. That's the real story here. I lose CD players. I don't know why they go missing. But the Kenwood, uh, from a design standpoint, this is pretty slick because I was thinking at the time, you know, Kenwood premium sound quality, yada, yada, yada. The story of the Kenwood brand name is really, really interesting, actually. they Part of the reason why it's Kenwood uh, was because Ken was like um, Kenmore. 
and Kenmore was like, a, you know, a quality, long-lasting. So they wanted to have a, a name that kind of played into that Ken, Kenmore uh, naming convention. So this obviously is pretty, you know, unique looking compared to that. It does have the anti-skip, 40-second uh, anti-skip. The lens here is super scratched. Um, now it's interesting, this one, again, has no anti-skip. With anti-skip, the audio is buffered into RAM. So you're really listening to essentially like a really short-lived, you know, think of it like a digital music player, because a CD plays the audio, you know, it plays the disc and reads it faster than you're listening to it, buffers it into RAM, and then once it's into RAM, it plays it out of the RAM, and then you can shake the disc, and it doesn't matter. So this is, that's how this works. So functionality-wise, you know, it's got a similar idea, different connectivity here and there. It does have the green headphone jack, a line output, power supply, everything's over on the side here, that's pretty slick. Over here you've got, uh, let's see, a DASC, so that's a digital anti-skip, so you can turn it on and off. A lot of people like to have that off, so you're literally listening to the CD and not the digital buffer, because sometimes the sound quality of the buffer may be different than the actual quality of the direct disc feed. And then there is a hold switch as well. The bass boost is up there. Opening it up, it's kind of interesting the uh, the lens for the uh, display is down here, so it has to go through that and that, and those are pretty scratched up. But yeah, this is a cool unit. It's, um, you know, I like the design probably of the Sony better nowadays, but here's the, here's the big drawback of this unit. It takes four batteries, and I don't know why. If it was just the early um, anti-skip, you know, technology for that RAM, that buffer, required that but yeah that's the that's the Kenwood I haven't listened to that in ages okay next um, jumping forward you know drastically we reviewed the next three units in detail so I'm not going to go through them in too much detail but this is a Studebaker obviously Studebaker is a brand name that is is held by uh, an, a marketing firm and that's okay but the design of these units are amazing they look like you know like a 55 Studebaker I mean they, they're gorgeous very you know retro design this is plastic, it's not like a porcelain, that would be really cool, because the original look of this is kind of meant to look that way. So interesting now, a lot of electronics now, rather than have this logo, the compact disc digital audio logo, they all share this kind of modern CD logo, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I like this unit, I think it's cool. Uh, it has an anti-skip capability. This one does not play MP3s, I don't believe. It does have a USB jack. It's not rechargeable, but you can power it off of a USB cable. That's a great feature. Again, 4.5 volts, only two batteries. I love the fact that it only takes two batteries. Hold switch down here. I love the fact that they made them just round like a CD. I think that's cooler than like a odd shaped one like the Kenwood or even the Sony. I like the fact that it's round. Um, but yeah, it's a great little unit. The only thing I don't like about the Studebaker is the volume switch. I like a I like a rock or not a rocker. I like a knob. I like a a knob like that to control volume. I don't like having um, these tiny little tick 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 buttons in terms of volume control. But a cool looking unit anyway. I think that's pretty neat. Next, um, let's look at this. This is the Long Tell, although it's available in various brand names. This is to me drastically different than anything that has come before it. Um, let's go ahead and open it up under the hood there. Uh, that is a smoked, you know, but still somewhat clear lid. It's super fingerprinty, you know, shiny plastic, which looks cool when it's brand new, but it never looks that way again. So it's kind of frustrating keeping it clean. This wood grain plastic is kind of interesting. It's also somewhat transparent, which is really, really weird. Sound quality is good on this unit. One thing I've noticed about the next two units I'm going to talk about is sometimes you have to hit play like three, four times to get it to do what it's supposed to do which is odd, and I don't know why that is. It's got an on and off switch. Uh, it's got the volume knob, which is good. Two headphone jacks, which that's pretty unique. Two headphone jacks, so you can share it with a friend. This is using a built-in rechargeable battery. So you can uh, charge it up. There's a battery indicator light. As you can see, no battery compartment because it has a rechargeable battery and it lasts forever. And I think that's awesome. Now I know it's not gonna be around as long as that guy was, or even this one, because of the fact that the battery is not, you're not gonna replace the battery. I mean, once the battery finally, you know, dies out, you're going to be done with the unit. And it's fairly expensive, but that being said, this is super cool to just recharge your CD player, because this thing especially, man, 
This will chew up your batteries. It's expensive to operate this just because of the batteries. That one's a lot better. Uh, no anti-skip, same with that. This has anti-skip, it runs on two. No anti-skip on this one, but it also runs on two. But just to have the rechargeable battery, I think it's cool. Also another thing that's cool is the display. Let me turn it on. The display is backlit, which is neat. So if you're listening to a CD at night, backlit. This has a bunch of uh, EQ presets. I don't know if the Studebaker has presets, EQ presets. Um, this one does not, it just is what it is. But you've got EQ presets, you've got all kinds of stuff. It plays MP3s, it plays a variety of formats actually. So yeah, that's a cool, cool device. And then finally, we have the Mono Deal uh, CD player, which, you know, from a form factor standpoint, it's, you know, it's awesome. I love this. It's barely bigger than a CD. It's got four rubberized feet. It's also rechargeable. You just plug in a cable and you charge it. Hold switch, completely round volume switch. Um, it's rechargeable, like I said, headphone jack and green there. Clamshell comes up from the side, which is kind of interesting. Instead of top to bottom, it's left to right. And yeah, it does a great job. It's also backlit on the screen, which apparently this one is not charged. Wait, I have to turn it on first. Okay, so blue backlit buttons, large display on the top, and that's something that this one as well has, and it seems to be a good position for a screen, I think, to have it just on top. I, I think I like that better than having to look down on the front edge. That's just a preference thing. But yeah, uh, it's great. It's sound quality is good on all of these. You know, none of them sound bad whatsoever. They, they all have that great compact disc sound quality. And uh, these two play MP3s and I think HD CD or HCCDs or whatever, just a higher quality CD. So anyway, super cool. Um, again, CD players, I love them. I love the portability of them. You know, a portable one being able just to listen to on your headphones and not disturb anybody. I think it's a cool thing. And it's you know great for trips and things and that, like that and connecting it to uh, a good set of headphones and just chilling out and listening to some music, whatever you like. So tell me about your favorite CD player in the comments below. There are thousands of varieties of CD players out there, you guys. I know there's so many variants. Sony alone, you know, dozens and dozens of Discmans and you know Walkmans. Just crazy, crazy amount of product out there. So find one you like if you're interested in this. They're cheap, new. You can get them for as low as like 15 bucks. You know, if you look for a vintage one, you know, 15, 20, 25. If you want one of the rechargeable ones that are modern, battery rechargeable, these are kind of ridiculously expensive. I think at this point, they're still like 50, 60, 70 dollars, which is kind of a lot, but they are cool. But uh, yeah, there you go. The compact disc collection that, or compact disc portable collection that I have and uh, hope you thought that was interesting. So happy record hunting, guys, CD hunting, whatever it is for you. And we will see you tomorrow.